Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we review our favorite RPGs, collectible card games, MMOs, video games, PC games, and bring up interesting topics and things that we'd like to share with everyone. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. So, as you steal my example, that's true. Oh, that's right. No, no, I got another. <laughs> so you can slide that to that side of the table because they're both exactly the same, just different characters. So, on the player's turn, super simple rules. Pretty much, you guys play D and D. You're D and D people, you know. You have your action, which is perform an attack, use a skill, or exchange your action for a maneuver. Then you've got your maneuvers, which in this system we don't really do distances. It's either engage, short, medium, long, or extreme. Okay. So, so engage is fighting. Short is cross the room. Like me and AJ right now, across the room, we're we're, we're short. Mm-hmm. By the way, Star Wars guns at short range are rolling against a difficulty dice of that, so you're killing someone usually. Ooh, Pistols killing Star Wars, which is cool. Players don't die, NPCs die. For a player to die, you have to get crit. You roll like 150 on a d100. Hmm. So odds are, if players get taken out, they don't die. Okay. So it's like Luke Skywalker losing his wrist on Cloud City. And he's taken out. He's useless. But the rest of the group can save him from his impending death. You can get a complication. Yes. Oh, yeah, you get lots of setbacks. So you then have your maneuver, which is either a move, aim. Aim is the best maneuver ever because it basically adds a boost dice to your roll, which only gives good things. So it's either okay, blank, so... advantage, or more successes. More successes equal more damage. That's the equivalent of a full attack. And get no better. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you can take cover, which basically gives your opponent black dice, which shows good. Ready or stow a weapon or item. And then interact with your environment. Basically, it's the flipping a control. Some serious interaction as opposed to just pushing a button. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then we've got the engage or disengage. There's no attacks of opportunity, so basically that counts as a move, just going to be engaged. Yeah. Okay. And then stand up, so in case you get knocked down by a hit. Then you have your incidental, but the big thing is, for two strain, on your character sheet, you have wounds and strain. Think of wounds as your physical damage, and strain as your mental, plus just exhaustion. Because all stun weapons do strain damage, so you can take somebody out by stun damage alone, which is nice. Okay. So you can choose to take two strain and get a second maneuver on your turn. So you could move and aim and shoot by taking two strain. But you can only do two maneuvers you can only do two max two maneuvers, so you can't like keep milking it for. You can do a double move and shoot, or double move hit the controls. A lot of folks use the double move to get in your spaceship, in your cockpit, and start the engine. There's actually in your talent tree a thing called jumping in the seat that's basically a maneuver to get in and turn your engine on. Okay. So we then have the cool, funny little dice. So when you have a characteristic, that's your stat for the dandy turns. You have that number of green dice. Green dice are good, and you know they give you success, which is the starburst. Advantage, which is the little chevron guys. Advantage does not equip success, so you can succeed and fail, have advantage or have disadvantage. So one great example I always give everybody is you're shooting at a guy behind a bar. You miss, you fail, get no successes, so you don't hit him, but you have advantage. So while you're shooting this jerk behind the bar, AJ the Wookiee at the end of the bar you're lining the shot up for him because the guy's doing this whole duck from the exploding bottles and running right into AJ. So you could choose for your advantage to give AJ a blue dice to, to add to his dice roll when he rolls his pool. Okay. Because when you roll, you're going to be rolling your skill plus the difficulty, which it's really simple. It's easy, average. Most of the times you're going to be doing this, but like I said, if you shoot someone short range, you're rolling against that, mm-hmm. which then hard. And then these little dice are the opposite of the yellow dice. When you, tr- when you have a characteristic that you've trained in, 
This upgrades one of your greaves into this guy. This guy is powerful because he has this symbol, which is Triumph. Triumph is basically the natural goddamn 20. Okay. Except like in Edge of Empire, when the series first came out, Triumph basically is, you tell me how you just won this fight. Oh. You can flat out describe it. As the books have come, they've weakened the Triumph down to like, you disarm him, you, you trigger a thing. It, Triumph is also counts as having three advantages, just to give you an idea how powerful it is. Okay. So you can, and you can use it for multiple things and break it down. Okay. So when you roll your pool, we'll just say we're going to roll this to make sure I get a decent mix. These are threat. They're the opposite of advantage. They take each other out. So when you roll your dice, you want to like start parceling things out. Here you got a success and an advantage, but here you got three failures. These are the failure symbols. So this takes out that. So your roll here is two failures and an advantage. So you fail at whatever you just tried to do. But you have an advantage, which means you can pass on a blue dice to the next player, or you can give the bad guys a black dice. So like, say everybody's taking their turn right now, and you know the bad guy's going to take your shot. Mm -hmm. Because when we do initiative, it's popcorn order. So we basically roll, and we decide whether it's PC or NPC for each turn. So it'll be, okay, who wants to go next? And who goes next? And then the bad guys take their turn, and then who goes next? Okay. Most, uh, the, the way the, the enemies, NPCs work in this is sort of like fourth edition. You have minions, which basically they fire as a group. So there's a squad of podunk stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have the rival, which is the, the stormtrooper sergeant. Who, he's almost equal to you guys in skill and abilities. Then you've got the nemesis, which is the big bad that says the group is supposed to take on. And the big bad, they've evolved the character. So now in later editions, the big bad gets like a second a turn at the end of the open issue. Oh, cool. Just to give them more oomph, so that way Vader feels like Vader, as opposed to you guys out for striking Vader in one shot. For sure. <laughs> so it's just get that, get that flanking going and just turn. Sure. Yep. <laughs> the boss oh, he's the boss dead, guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh man, what just happened? So let me grab a let few more destiny points. So have you played fifth? Uh, yeah. You know how fifth has inspiration points? Mm -hmm. That you can say, hey, I'm awesome, I use my inspiration point. Star Wars has something a little cooler that I think is better than inspiration because it's the destiny pool. Which is a pool that at the beginning of the game, each player is going to grab one of those white dice. So we'll spread them out across the table and roll that dice. Ooh, I love you. <laughs> Too dark. So we have one light. Two lights. Two lights. Two lights. Perfect. Oh and my a gosh, dark. There is the balance of the force. <laughs> so with the Destiny Pool, it's basically like inspiration. You guys use light side points. If, like in later on when you play Force and Destiny, which is the Jedi, mm -hmm. a lot of Jedi powers, you need to flip this to use it. Or when you get to the end of the talent trees, there's a signature thing that your, your, your race, your class does. Mm -hmm. And it requires a flip because it's something like, your ship just blew up in space. But no one died. <laughs> you know, so all of a sudden there's this floating escape capsule just floating around, everybody crammed into it. The dark side are all argued by the GM for the same effect. You can make basic declarations, like say you were the Millennium Falcon inside the tunnel that's not a tunnel of the asteroid that turns out to be a worm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we bought breathing masks to go outside the ship and kill the Minox. So you, or you can say, yes, I have an extra blaster pack because I rolled three threat and I ran out of ammo. Because Star Wars doesn't do ammo for the most part. You never see anyone reload. Mm -hmm. They have bandoliers because there's a ability called spare clip that you basically the gym can never say you run out of ammo. <laughs> because you're always slapping a new mag in there. That's great. The, the, also, the super powerful thing when you really want to succeed. Say you're this guy rolling too green for his skill, mm -hmm. which in this case is leadership. Say he's all alone and having to do a hard leadership because a xenomorph pops out and scares the shit out of his group. And he's getting ready to roll this pathetic pool. He can flip one and upgrade one green to a yellow. Okay. Also, if the GM is a jerk, which I usually am, and you're not choosing to do that option for something that's like really important, I'll think, let's make this story more exciting. I flip this and you turn a purple into a red, which has the opposite of the D20. Now, we haven't talked about the uh, despair, which is called despair. All the other dice negate each other. So threat and advantage take each other out. Success and failure take each other out. If these both come up, and they have come up. I actually had my game on the other night. It just came up two despair and a, th and a triumph. They both happen. Ooh. So a great example of this is on Return of the Jedi on, on Endor. Yes, they take the shield generating station. Yes, it's a fully functioning Death Star. Surprise! GM didn't know it was a fully functioning Death Star, but that sounds something cool for the despair. 
or it can be like extra backup shows up or something horrendous happens to you guys. You're running to your spaceship and the ship explodes. God, I hope we can come up with some story thing of why there's another ship for you to take. <laughs> and I know it's how you quickly put that down. But that's, that, that's pretty much how the Destiny Pool works, which is cool. Cause, and the thing is, if AJ is really confident in his skill, but you know he sucks at rolling dice. He might have this great dice pool. By the way, your mom has great dice pools and rolls horribly for pilot. When yeah, she's piloting I've, the airplane, she, 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 she was astrogated you guys to uh, <laughs> Maui or somewhere. Oh, oh no, it was it was in France. They were trying to go from Portugal to Berlin. They they took thought, some side trips. I thought you were throwing an insult at him. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so his mom plays in her Sunday uh, steampunk game. Oh, that's cool. So any of you guys can grab and say, guys, upgrade that shit. Because the problem is, if you don't see your, your, your person making his dice pull and grabbing, I will think about grabbing. Mm -hmm. Now, once you see me gesturing, don't be a jerk and try to put your hand in my way. Unless you know it's a <laughs> funny, funny moment, then go for it. <laughs> Only one flip of the destiny pool can happen per dice roll. So okay. there's no flip, 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 you know, upgrading this horrible dice pool, you know, roll. So, so, so once somebody has flipped, yeah. GM can't just be like, no, yeah, or yeah. vice versa. Nope. So, so, so once you flip it, that's the only flip that happens on that action. Granted, the more you flip, the more the other team gets. Don't choke the economy. It, it works so much better once going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Trust almost every GM I know that's played Star Wars. Nobody dicks anybody over when it comes to that. They just want the story to keep rolling. Because mm -hmm. it would be the whole Han Solo rules his intimidation as he's threatening the guys running down the Death Star in the detention center. Going, ah, oh, blast, 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 blast. And then all of a sudden, the next roll is, you know, giving, you know, boom, I roll a dark side and there's a platoon down the hallway. <laughs> You know, so it's one of those. Uh, <laughs> and then he runs back and closes the door. Yes, and when he and yeah. Yeah. Points. yeah. Just like if you play Fate, you get more fluidness of the, the, the spending of the economy. Uh, what's soak? So, whenever you take damage, it's going to be okay, I roll the dice. It's going to be you need one success to do damage, mm -hmm. which on like the last page it's got the weapons, it'll tell you a static number. For every additional success you get, that's one extra point of damage. Okay. Most weapons do between six and ten. Most. Some do like more, some do less. Soak is how much between your brawn and your natural armor can be soaked up. Okay. Most of the armors in Star Wars suck. Like Stormtrooper armor is like plus two soak. Lambda armor sucks. It's literally you. You're it's shooting through plastic. The one thing I don't like is Mandalorian armor is not as awesome as it should be. Oh man. But there's things you can do like superiority, which will boost your armor and give your stuff up. And this game is all about modding. If you've ever played any of the Knights of the Old Republic games where you mod your gear up the wazoo, this game is all about modding. Yeah. <laughs> like when you play a Jedi or a Sith in this, you're all about modding the crystal, the hilt, the style of the hilt, the power supply. You can have your, like one of our Jedi guys has a light, a flashlight on the back end of his lightsaber. <laughs> Another guy has a walking stick into ad, you know, adaptation, so it looks like a walking stick until you light that bad boy up and then people run. Okay, so real quick. You got to knock him off This means that the first combat check? That scope you got. Yeah, so the first combat check you take. Like the first time. So the first attack you do during an encounter. So basically you get that one great setup shot, and then after that you're shooting on the fly. It looks like it adds... The one explosion and one threat is what it looks like. It adds one success and one one of these guys, right? Uh, no, it's two. Let's see. Oh, looks yeah, like it's, it adds one success and one threat to the first check that you make. It adds one success to the first combat check made with this weapon each encounter. And then the sling has something to say. Yeah. Okay, so does that add one die or one No, that one's success? automatic success. Oh. So you automatically have a, I succeed unless you roll failures, which makes it more likely you land that first shot. So that first shot is, so the first mm -hmm. shot I start with one failure and two successes? You give one threat and one success. What's the threat? Here, a uh, cost to buy the ability, or is that... That's the cost the to buy the ability. When you first okay, make so. a character, you get an experience pool that mm -hmm. you spend to raise your characteristics and raise your pool. The character generator, because Ogdu is awesome that he made, he can't list what's on the talent tree, so that's why you have the black and white page to tell you what those, those mm -hmm. boxes mean. Because it says, check out page so-and-so, but I figured give you guys print up so you can see it on that page. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh, do we have... Because um, the talent trees... Talent tree, do we? I don't know. Did, did someone think ahead to print one up for you? I think someone might have. Where did I put it? I don't know, but let's see. 
Oh, yeah. So I was looking at that, I was like, man, I really Someone could have thought ahead since you gave me the heads up on your character. Because <laughs> it makes it so much easier to have your talent tree. Oh, yeah. And one nice thing in Star Wars, since you get like, usually it's like 15 experience per session or 25 if you have story closure, you can buy other career trees. Like in one of our right old uh, Galaxy and Fire group that we were doing, we had a hut in the crew, because they actually have hut as playable race. You're basically playing a young hut that's slightly bigger than person size. Okay. The problem with the hut is they cannot take two maneuvers per turn, because they're a slow hut. That but he started as a heavy, which is basically big gun guy, mm -hmm. reduces the difficulty of having a big giant gun. And then basically his second career was a trader, as in business trader. So he is now the mercenary group's negotiator and trader because the trader tree gave some great boosts to negotiations and stuff. Mainly because one of their first missions was to work for the Black Sun to buy a bunch of frogs that huts eat, deliver them to the Black Sun, and then take the frogs to the huts and deliver them to the certain hut in his kitchen on the, on the station. The, the thing they discovered was the guy was poisoning the frogs and then giving them back to them to deliver. Because there's these smugglers delivering frogs that happen to be poisoned. I recognize that plot. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately the group like took the, the one poisoned frog because they recognized that she was off and kept it. And it laid eggs. And they basically made, in the, the, their YT-1300, they've got a terrarium where this frog is multiplying. <laughs> so they now have a small gourmet frog cartel business going on in the background. What's the only hint of poison? Because when he was rolling, you know, his... his that came up, and I'm like, oh, dude, you see, like, a cluster of eggs in the bottom of the container. And it's like, we will raise these eggs for a hot and fire. <laughs> and, of course, Xander's adorable when he plays his hut, because he always does the <laughs> like when, important when you're playing that. Yeah. Like, when TGG had the Broadway store, he used to sit on the couch when they had the couch in the game, and then he just lounge out like a hut. He's like, oh, feed my kid. <laughs> But the nice thing is, for when you're playing a hut, they count as uh, a little bit bigger than normal, so you, the rest of the team can use him as cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Because good. huts have this really annoying ability that lets them soak, like, before they're soaked, they soak 10 points right after that. Oh, wow. So you don't so want to attack huts very often. Unless you have a great weapon that says breach or sunder. Breach, you reduce 10 armor automatically. Uh... If you have uh, piercing, piercing will d delete. I have that. Piercing will delete off the armor. So when you tell me what your damage is, you'll say, and it's three piercing. So I know to ignore three soak, which is important when you're going after hard tar hardened targets. Like, like mm -hmm. huts, like droids, you know. Like like anyone. Like blaster doors that have their own soak. Oh, that's I also think we're going to be shooting setting. blaster doors with blasters. You can always be shooting blaster doors with blasters. That's true, they're not going to kill very long. That's fine. You just need one success on a one dice roll. So when you get advantage on your dice pools, I'm going to throw these little player aids out here for you guys, because you'll be saying, what can I use an advantage for? Well, on the bottom half of the sheet, throw one this way. And since we are starting off with a bit of spaciness, like space flight, you came out of hyperspace and surprised there's pirates there. Here's what you can do in a spaceship. Space combat is just like man-to-man -man combat. They use the same metrics and everything. Whoever's got the smuggler has the, the ship's stats. The very, do. very last yeah, yeah. sheet is the, the ship's sheet. So that is your ship. If you have force fields, you have defense. Just like on your characters here, if you have defense, which none of you have gear that gives you defense. Mm -hmm. So I think one of you might. The trend ocean if anyone can. His weapon gives him deep melee defense. Mm -hmm. So defense means you add a black dice to the attacker attacking you, which has failure and disadvantage on it. So ship combat has many things you guys can do. So the maneuvers is mainly what your pilot's going to be doing. And as you notice, beneath that is a crap ton of extra things everyone else can do. So you can have the pilot put you guys in a very good advantageous point, like stay on target. Stay on target basically gives you everyone who's shooting one of these because you're making it easier to just shoot people. You can uh, angle the deflector shields. Then everybody else can do other things like boost the shields. If you have mechanics, it gives you the stats for doing a boost the shields move. If you have damage control, if you have mechanics, you can go do damage control on the ship. If you have astrogation or perception, you can help plot the course for your pilot because you're like 
there, let's go that way, and the pilot immediately follows your course. And you're basically helping him out. Mm -hmm. You can co-pilot if you've got some piloting skills. You can do jamming of your enemy's equipment. The, my favorite one, which is slice the enemy systems, it's three computers, you basically hack their ship and turn off the system. That's always fun. Then there's fire discipline, and then scanning the enemy if you want to get more information, like, hey, cargo bay on the fourth deck, third spot down is open, we can land in that by the ship. And then attack the ship from within. So there's things everybody can do in space combat, which is nice. And of course, even if you don't have gunnery, which is what the ship, ship's cap cannons do use, you can still try and probably use destiny points to help boost up your. That's how Luke Skywalker got so good all of a sudden. And then I'll say, don't get cocky, kid. <laughs> What's a silhouette? Silhouette is the before? size of the vehicle. Okay. So on your ship, if you look at your ship's mm -hmm. sheet, it will have the ship's silhouette, which I think is a silhouette too for you guys. You know what's on ship sheet? Yes. Okay. So your ship Silhouette sheet. four. Silhouette four. Okay. And basically, just like with humans, humans are silhouette one. So like even Wookiee is like at the very top edge of silhouette one. Things that are one size smaller get a boost to attacking bigger things. So if you're shooting at a Jawa, you get a black dice because he's, he's silhouette zero smaller. Than you. Okay. But on the plus side, if you're a force user who has move, you can throw silhouette zero things like nobody's business. So a Jawa can be checked across the room. <laughs> Um, so our silhouette is four. What's the advantage of a bigger silhouette in a ship? Bigger silhouette in a ship means you basically you're bigger. You have more shields. Mm -hmm. Most most vehicles only have the shield that you see there, the forward and the aft. Mm -hmm. Bigger vehicles have four quarters of the uh, ship. So you have your left, right, forward, back. You can then boost. So that way you can take all four of your shield points and put them on one one shield and charge something. Like they all go on the forward shield and you charge. Or if you're being chased by pirates, you put them all on the back shield. Okay. Which, which basically gives you more points to distribute. Mm -hmm. That and There are some features, like uh, there's the hotshot pilot, that he can actually make his vehicle act like a bigger vehicle or act like a smaller vehicle, depending on how he wants to play. Oh, cool. So that way, if you're being attacked, you can act like a smaller, more agile vehicle to be more difficult to attack. If you want to attack something, let's act like a bigger vehicle to get a boost. You know? <laughs> Direct shot. All right. Okay. So definitely check out your talents because there's you know lots of cool talents there, which is one of the nice things of the game. Mm -hmm. Obligation is also a big part of the game. For this one, it's already figured into the story that you all have obligation to the hut, the hut that's sending you on this job. This just makes the storyteller's job easier. That that's why you're doing the thing you're doing. In the game, basically, as a new character, you can buy extra obligation to get more cash or experience, which is nice. It's the only way a beginning character can have more than cheap padded armor and a blaster pistol. Because pretty much everyone is forced to start off with a cheap pistol and cheap armor unless you put some obligation in and upgrade to 2,000 credits, which is like four times your normal cash. So it's good to owe people to hook you up. Mm -hmm. When you have obligation, there's a ton of different types of obligation from drug addiction to wanted to duty to, you know, you could just owe someone a debt of money. You know, so you can, and it basically throws story elements out there because when the game starts normally and you have obligation, the GM would say, okay, we have five players. Each person has starts with 10 obligation, and then any additional obligation to pick. Mm -hmm. The GM will make a little page in a sheet saying, 10 obligation, you make it 11 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and then I roll this. And then if it came up as, oh no, I rolled a 7, your obligation comes up. So at some point in the adventure that I, I wrote up, his obligation is going to pop up. So if he's wanted by the, the, the Black Sun, mm -hmm. At the start of the game, you take two strain because you know they're out there. You know you got a video holobid message saying, we're coming for our money or your legs. Oh. You take two strain because you're acting froggy. The rest of the group takes one strain automatically because he's acting weird. You don't know what it is, but you're stressing why he's acting weird. And in the adventure, I have to worm in his obligation of just that. It could be something easy as family. Like, okay, guess what? Your, your shyster brother who's always ripping people off is conning your customer that you're working with in the adventure. And it could be that your brother called you saying, ah, dude, I need money. I need money bad. I'm doing this thing and this thing. Hey, what, what planet are you on? And he shows up at your front door trying to con people to get money. So obligation's fun that way, and it lets you create background. For Edge of Empire, which is just mainly the scum of the you know, villains of the universe, obligation is just in that book. When you play Age of Rebellion, which is the Rebels and the Alliance, the Imperials, it's, called duty, right? it's, it's Age of Rebellion and it's Duty, and that one, obligation, you want to work your obligation down. 
Now you guys can screw up a job and eject the spice into space, the Imperial Blockade, and earn more obligation if things go bad. And start. <laughs> All of a sudden, the group now has a additional group hut obligation twenty on top, and the obligation can stack. Where's my money? <laughs> Or you can go up and say, I owe you money, here's 5,000 credits, and you reduce your obligation. Okay. So, so it's the like economy goes back and forth. Duty, you're constantly wanting to build duty up, because when you get to 100 duty, all of a sudden the Imperials or the Rebels, depending on which side you're on, are saying, you did a great job, AJ. What would you like for your base or new vehicle upgrade? Because there's actually a cash-in value that you get upgrades and things, as you become more, more useful to the cause. And then, of course, in Destiny, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's morality. So it's basically tailored towards Jedi light sightedness. Or you can pick to reduce your morality and be more dark sightedness. The only difference is light side paragons, when you become really good light side, you get plus two to your strength. Dark side, get plus two to their wounds. And dark side, once you go dark side, when you use a force power, every time you use the force, you roll the stats. I got a light side, so I have one light side I can tap into. If I'm a Jedi, that's great. I'm using that light side point. But if all of a sudden in this horrible situation I roll dark side, let's make it really dark. All of a sudden the fear and the anger and the, 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 the dark negative emotions are in power. And if I have to use the force, I have to actually take a conflict point. Hmm. Now normally for a Jedi it's okay to take a couple points of conflict because at the end of the adventure you roll dice and you're like, I get that much morality back because I did good. Mm -hmm. Now, unless I killed the younglings, I'm probably taking enough conflict. I'm not. I'm actually dropping down. So when you use this, you basically have to flip one of your light side to dark side to actually use those force points to do something. Okay. And some powers for Jedi, because the way they break the powers down, they do the good and the negative version of the power. So you have heal and harm, which harm is the choke, the mm -hmm. force choke. Mm -hmm. And you know, for the heal, you have to have a light side to do additional good things with heal. If not, you can use the dark side and basically bring someone back. You know, it's equal to your, I believe, your intel. Oh, it's instant heal. You just come and go three points, four points, which is way better than a stim pack, which is the healing potion of Star Wars, where you just slap the stim pack on and you get five points back, and then the next time four, and the next time three, and then they stop working for you. Oh, it's right. the, it, you, you know, just for, just until you get some chill downtime. Okay. So that's one of the, the things you got to be careful. With. Stim packs is they have diminishing returns. Then it's like, oh crap, we gotta get you to the auto doctor. And crits stack, they don't they don't go away until you get to a doctor and you actually have a doctor roll to beat your crit. So crits are bad because for every crit you have, it adds plus ten to your next crit roll. So if you're facing someone who's got a ridiculously evil weapon that crits on like one advantage. And then it's like, I only hit you for a point of damage, but I get a crit. There's also some we nasty weapons like in the newest book that came out. For every advantage you have, you do an extra cut with these knives, because they're these cool round bladed things that are meant to do death with a thousand cuts. Now, if you're fighting a guy in armor, those weapons are useless because you're soaking all that damage. But if the guy's got no armor on, you're just slicing in pieces. So it all depends on what the weapon is you've got. I, I crit on four advantages. Yes. And some of your, I don't know if you guys have any weapons, but there's some weapons that say things like burn, uh, knockdown, things like that. If your weapon has a f additional effects, if it has additional effects, those all take two advantage to activate. Oh, like burn? Yeah, so if you have burn, blast, you, it blasts is area effects. Okay. Because normally, like, I'm assuming you've got some explosive there. I got Oh, yeah, you've got the ridiculous frag grenade. I like that. You're taking the bounty hunter? Yeah. Like the name? That actually came up on a Chiss name generator. But you're done, son. Yeah, I'm done. No, I'm also going to buy a fire. But your grenade, it's blast seven. So that means that it can include seven targets in the area. It only it only hits the first guy. But if you have two advantage, it hits everybody. And it's really nice. No, you can see all these messes, but you cannot have one. If you get one. Do you still have money? I think you still have cash. Two seventy <laughs> credits, just Two, enough. Two hundred and seventy credits, just enough to get one. So what is add plus ten per rank of lethal blows to any critical injury result inflicted on? So that means you basically have vicious ten. So anytime I roll, you, well in this case you would roll percentile. You're adding ten to the result. That, so if you rolled 100, it would actually be 110. Which basically, you're you're more vicious in your attacks, which makes sense since your job is to basically murder, kill people. 
What does that disorient do? Disorient? Disorient is fun because it knocks your target off balance. But if you truly interested, here's all the effects. And just because I think our assassin wants to know what the crit hits look like, here's the crits. That's the only thing I was about. Just to give you an idea. But there, there's a basic rundown on basic lines. So yeah, lightsaber. Who's that arm? <laughs> that means restricted. That means oh. unless the story has a reason for it. You just can't have You just can't find one. And it also means that any weapon scanner in the, the known galaxy finds you, you're probably getting arrested for being a Jedi. Yeah, no, that's fair. They're like, hey, you got a lightsaber. You must be a Jedi. You're a jerk. You're a poopy head. You're a poopy head. <laughs> like, well, I'm just about well, to understand. Well, there's a poopy head. Yes. I am a, I'm playing a mean bounty hunter. You're playing a mean oh. Chiss bounty hunter? What is your Chiss anyway? Chiss is, there's a character named Thrawn that was made for the books that came, eventually came to the Rebel series. That okay. He's basically blue-skinned humanoid with red eyes. They have infravision because okay. they live underground on a frozen planet. And uh, you like go, but most Chiss really do, are really intellectual. They think things oh. through, so they're like one step ahead of everybody else. Me. I'm just a And they look really cool. Uh, can I buy something before the campaign starts? Sure, if you have the cash still. Do. You do have some cash. I do. I have yeah. See, so that's why I love the character builder, because I basically gave each of these characters plus 50 experience and plus 2 grand. So you can actually have some gear. Because the, the concept is you guys have had at least one solid adventure together as a group. Okay. Except for maybe B2. If B2 didn't want to be part of the group, he just has leftover experience from when he was in the Clone Wars. Oh, I'm encumbered. I uh, don't worry about that. Okay. That would be as if you were carrying all of your gear, which I'm assuming you will not be carrying all of your gear. You have a ship, you can leave stuff behind it. Right? I'm carrying all my gear. I bought a backpack, so that could be. <laughs> and encumbrance is kind of wonky. Uh, armor doesn't count towards your encumbrance because you're wearing it. So don't worry about like when you're making a character with encumbrance. Brawn is what your encumbrance is based on, so if you want to be able to carry lots of stuff, use brawn. There are ways to work around encumbrance with weapons, like slings help, because you can use that sling to help carry your weapon. There's a cool weapon servo that's like from Aliens, where literally you put your weapon on this giant servo that swerves it around, and that does a great thing. The heavy has the ability to reduce the cumbersome of weapons, because some weapons say cumbersome, which means you have to have a brawn of that number, or you're rolling negatives to shoot. Where do you find the grenades? The grenades and things would be in the. They were in that page we had open. Some are on that page. Yeah, I was about to say, because some of the ones I'm looking at, like plasma charge. Yeah, the plasma charge is a detonation charge. It's not in the book that I brought with. But it does give you the damage and stuff there. Plasma charge does vehicle damage. It's basically setting the charge and you cut through a wall. Oh, okay. So basically, you, it's an extra key. I figured that would be a great thing to buy for the bounty hunter in case he needs to open the door and the door doesn't want to cooperate. And like Dunson is the gadgeteer bounty hunter, which is like Boba Fett. You have all the toys. Okay. They like to upgrade their armor and stuff. Like your armor does extra soak compared to what normal armor would do, because you you padded the armor to be more combat effective. And you've got some ridiculous weapons too. Oh yeah, I was looking at them like that's what I wanted to know because I'm all like, I only ever just want a sword. Yeah, you've got the hunting rifle. Oh, the hunting rifle. Yeah. It uh, automatically adds, because of your scope, it adds one advantage to your uh, successful checks. Yeah. And it's meant to be modded out. It's basically a hunter's rifle meant to be tweaked out for, for fun. And of course you've got the... Uh, that might be really effective, by the way. Oh yeah, no. Since you're going to a separatist <laughs> organization. He's got the... the, the oh, uh, one of the characters I made gave just the ion gun. That's the uber version of the uh, ion gun. Droid Disabler? Yeah, the Droid Disabler is the monster version of what the Jawa shot R2 with. Ooh. It basically does about four points more damage on a, just a blank four points more. Yeah, I bought a Restraining Bolt for reasons. See, now Restraining Bolts are good, but you still gotta make that computer's roll to get it on there. We, had a, we had a joke in our uh, May the 4th day game. Our one guy could not get the Restraining Bolt on this droid they were supposed to kidnap because it had <laughs> Imperial Secrets. And literally, the droid must be doing kung fu to block every attempt because literally they crashed a hover cycle in the middle of an Empire Day parade. And he's like, restraining bolt, restraining bolt. And he's like, failure, 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 disadvantage, disadvantage. It was bad in that one because they used our, my, my astromech, B O O M. Basically, it's an astromech demolitionist. 
So his panels open up. It's grenade launchers, mine launchers. He's literally meant to blow everything up. <laughs> Kelly played him last, and my friend uh, Ron's daughter played him the time before, because with the Demolitionist, with one advantage, you can stop one creature in the last radius from being hit. She picked herself at the end of that adventure when she fired the thermal detonator at the computer they're supposed to destroy. Because she was, you know, Imperials were hacking this computer on Hoth that was left behind, turned on. And she's like, if I throw a thermal detonator, will that destroy the computer? Yes. As well as the Imperial guy who she, she tried to do a deception with one green against the Imperial officer, Tail Horrible. So for his reaction, he drew his gun out and had it ready. He took the next turn to shoot her. Hurt her bad. She popped the thermal detonator out and blew up the whole room, except for this little pad where she was at the doorway. While her whole group were busy fighting stormtroopers, she just like, I'm staying on mission. And then she's like, I'm an Imperial droid. And he's like, lies. And that's when the grenade went off. Mission accomplished. Hey, there you go. Who's HP for Ish. Uh, her points. That's how much you can do to modify it. There's all kinds of cool things you can do to gear. Like, uh, one of my favorite is the underbarrel flamer. <laughs> because lightsabers don't block flamethrowers. That's why Jedi killers use the flamethrowers. Because you can just go... <laughs> you can't reflect. Because Jedi talent tree has reflect at the wazoo. So it's like, take two strain, do three points of damage per point of reflect in your enemy. So if you do well, you get like six points back and a guy with two points of reflect. Or if they roll despair and bad things, you know. Jedi's use the negative threats on opposite rolls. So it's like you roll three threats, I automatically will parry and throw it right back at you. So, you know, that's the way that... And then parry and reflect are two different skills. One is for melee, one is for range attack. Range, okay. Reflect being range and parry yep. melee. Yep, exactly. Because even though there's not really many Sith combats going on, it's, it's for the term force user. So you can have, like, Night Sister stuff going on and... Like right now, our Sunday group, we're doing Knights of the Old Republic just a month after the Sith Empire came back for the, the MMORPG. It's a month after the Sith came and just basically blitzkrieged across the galaxy. And peace has not been declared yet. Our poor group of Jedis are on the wrong side of the battle line currently. But they're on a planet that thankfully is not on the records. Or a Terra. It's in the planet's actual history that the Jedi Council erased it off the records. So the Sith don't know they're there until the group fucks up. <laughs> So as soon as the group do a hyperspace jump and roll some threat, uh, I think the Imperials just picked up your trail. And of course, one of the Jedi has uh, uh, premonitions. So he did his premonition and I basically gave him that. You do see in the not immediate future, because he's got a beard in the, in the vision, so he knows he's aged some, that a Sith craft will land and there'll be an apprentice, Sith apprentice waiting, and his master and a battalion of tro shock troopers will come off the ship invading the planet. Because part of the key of this planet is there's a Jedi Temple and a Sith Temple on a Force Virgins. And the nice thing with Force Virgins is you get free light side points or dark side points, depending on what the, the galaxy is at. Cool. That's cool. As long as dark side. Yeah, I mean... It's hey, cool. dark siders can still use the light side. Good. You know, that's one of those things they can still use the light side. It's just they have more tools in the shed. They're like, hey, we want these dark side points. I'm also gonna I'm buy sure a bolo. Should, uh, a bolo? Yeah. I'm gonna run away. Are you not? Can I just the bolo tie? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he wears it as a bolo tie. I, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know? He's got these two weights just going clank, 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 clank. They look like fuzzy dice, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if Han Solo can have this chance dice up there. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? No. Nothing until I actually start throwing dice, I don't think. Okay. The heart, uh, let's spread some dice around. Yeah. Spread. You, can, you can share with me, on. Just make sure these dice pools have enough of what you need. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anyone need four green? I do. You do? Uh, I will need some blue over here. Okay. So I use a marking number of this. Yeah. Right over there, right. 
I'm not going to deal with this pool. I need some bigger. Okay, so here's going to be your pool. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a green, you got two green and a yellow, so we can share this pool. Yeah. Looks like my one blue is best leadership. That'll do it. Oh, God. My hunting card doesn't have a bite bar? It does not. You can buy one. That's one of the mods that you can do to it. I didn't see where the mods were, so I didn't buy one. The buy pod's 20 credits, and I'll buy one. It's really good. That's fair. So as long as I've got it set up, I get these. <laughs> yeah. Though there might be some drawbacks to running around with your rifle. You're like, guys, I'm sitting on top of the ship. What are you? you know, if anybody asks you what you're doing, you say, just let them know you're a writer. The best part is nobody sees him up on top of the ship and he's wearing his blanket. <laughs> it's his camel, camel blankie. Yeah, you can't see camel. I'm assuming this is the good one sent them. It's bright pink, but it's camel. Okay, so we're ready. Boy, yes, yes. Does anybody want to get drinks before we start? Yes, actually. Yes. Because yeah. it will get warm. This game looks really fun. I want, I'm, happy, I'm excited to play it, and I'll be excited to, to see what we do with it. Because I want to. I'm, I'm sad that I forgot that one of the drawbacks is not building my own characters, and I probably won't have a sword. <laughs> You always make sure your character has a sword? Always. Yeah. It's a running theme in, in all like space games I play. It's like, so. Well, if mine finds a sword, play, I'll be sure to give it to you. We play um, mostly Pathfinder and Starfinder at this point. Um, and in our Pathfinder games, we have like as high tech as we could possibly get. And then we go over to our Starfinder game, and we're all just fighting with swords. <laughs> <laughs> in back alleys, punching each other. Just <laughs> like we got fights. laser weapons now, and we just hit each other. <laughs> drawn out street fights. We can stop you from bringing a laser into a soiree, but you can punch somebody anywhere. It's true. Yeah. We were just lamenting over the fact that whenever we. Best reference. By the way, for those who might want to dual wield or use a weapon that has auto fire, mm -hmm. uh, you declare before you roll your dice that you're using dual wielding or auto fire. Okay. Your dice pool is based on the worst of the two weapons, which is why I always recommend with folks who, you sword and sword and pistol, it's my mm -hmm. favorite combo. Mm -hmm. Keep them the same skill, so you're just on the same pool. And you add one extra purple for the weapon. Oh. You choose which one is your first weapon. If you hit, you can use two advantage to have the second weapon hit with the extra success of the first. Nice. Yeah, and there's no disadvantages for like shooting when you're engaged with somebody, shooting across the room. Mm -hmm. So you can play off that the stab you with the sword and shoot you with the blaster. Quickly, in the case of something like this, can I go to defender? Uh, no, it's a wash. No Ooh. success. If you did not succeed, then you did not succeed. S lack of success is equal to failure. Okay. So if, like, if, so, you, yeah, so if it's a wash, it that. just means you're shooting and missing. And... Mm -hmm. So so that's the one nice thing. is Unless there's an actual success, it doesn't hit. You need to have them beat to do anything. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Which is why when you're shooting, you know, here's a quote of the guy shooting. That's like worse. Shooting at short range, five feet away, it's in your favor. Or if you're like... Han Solo shooting Greedo in the chair. By the way, he's got a blue dash boost because Greedo doesn't know that he's got the blaster out and he's ready and you're already aimed. And... So, so gunplay is dangerous. Lightsabers, on the other hand, are ridiculously dangerous because they have not pierce, they have breach, which means it ignores one point of armor of a vehicle, which most vehicles are like 10 times what a person is. Ooh. So it immediately ignores 10 soak. Wow. So a lightsaber, I don't care what armor you've got, it goes it through just the arms right through, yeah. yeah. That, which yeah, yeah. Which, which, which is nice that it makes lightsaber combat really rough. The beauty of it, too, is if you have someone with Kurtosis or another lightsaber, there's a, a, a Notori. It's basically a race that's meant to be a Jedi killer, all set up in Kurtosis. So as soon as a Jedi ever runs, rolls two threat, his weapon hit one of the part pieces of Kurtosis, and his power it powers down until he gets time to play with it and fix it. Good. Yeah. Is rock. yeah. And that guy's weapon crits on a one. 
So he does horrible things. Like every turn he's critting on somebody. They're meant to like take out a team of baby Jedi. Actually, What's wrong with the Jedi tricks? Well, young Jedi. Okay. Padawans. Shoot them with things like okay. guns. Yeah. And, and in the game, there is what they call for, like Force and Destiny. If, you, if you're playing a starter character in that, you're basically like a Padawan. Skill wise. Because you have to buy all your Jedi powers separate. And there's like eight powers. So you basically, most likely, you're buying the first rank of each one of those. And then you basically, they have what they call the night level play, where it's you're basically, you get 150 experience. The max of your skills can be is three. Mm -hmm. And you basically get a lightsaber or not 9,000 credits to spend. And it's funny how people debate whether I get a lightsaber or I get 9,000 credits. Mm -hmm. Because the nice thing is for 500 credits, you can buy a training lightsaber that has a stun emitter that when you find a lightsaber crystal, you can pop out your stun emitter and put a crystal on. It's now a fully functioning 9,000 credit lightsaber. Most of the expensive crystal. Yeah. <laughs> Which the crystals really aren't that expensive if you're playing in a t era when the crystals were out there. Yeah. But like in, you know, as a Rogue One, the Empire was hoarding all the crystals. And Unless you're playing Sith, it's hard to buy crystals. Yeah. And they actually have the stats if you want to have a corrupted crystal. Because, you know, the new storyline, that all the reason why the crystals are red is because they've been corrupted. Oh. I thought it was because they're synthetic. Well, originally in EU, it was because they couldn't actually make crystals. So they, they cooked their own in the furnaces, and that's why you had red or orange. They've changed it now to that, because, of course, Disney. That what it is, is you have to go through and find a crystal, and then you have to control the crystal, and it's the force bleeding from the crystal that causes the redness. And I much prefer the old, uh, you can get a furnace and cook your own crystal, but that's what they're going for, that Vader had to like, pick through a hundred different those people by Kevin's building are doing, making their own crystal? <laughs> <laughs> is that what we call it? <laughs> crystal Sith, huh? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. all about the spice. They're all about the crystal methods. <laughs> Okay, so you so say everybody ready? Um, yeah. Yeah. Basic ideas? Yeah. Until the last minute panic? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, now, we are starting in space. You may want to be able to find one of these pretty quickly. And that's a great place to wrap it up there. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D &D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.